I'm glad you could join us today for the first episode of the second season of The Salem Painter. So far, we've had a really great response to our paintings, and uh, a lot of people have been watching the show, and we've had a, a really good response on the YouTube channel, and I want to thank you all for that. I guess uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. I, th I think today we're going to do a, a sunset. Uh, as many of you know, if you watched uh, the first season, the sunsets are one of my favorite things to paint. When the show started, when it came on, you saw me brushing the canvas, I was putting on a thin, even coat of liquid white. Liquid white is basically a thinned down oil paint. It's a mix of titanium white and linseed, but uh, I just used the prepared version that's already in the can. You, you can get this at art stores. And uh, it's what's known as a medium. It lets the paint move around easily on the canvas and lets you mix on the canvas. There are other types. You can just use straight linseed oil, very thin coat of that. There's one called liquid clear, and there's liquid black. But uh, liquid white is the one we use when we're doing daytime scenes because normally when you go down uh, the, towards the horizon, things, they, they tend to get a little bit lighter, and uh, the liquid white helps that. So first we're gonna start out we're going to get a little cat yellow on a brush. And since it's the sunset, we're going to start right down towards the middle of the canvas and just, just brush in some, uh, some cat yellow. I usually start with a very small amount of paint. You can always add more, but if you, if you add too much, it's very hard to, to thin it down. So As we come out from the center, you can see it's going to get lighter because it's blending with the liquid white. And that's good for us. We, we want it to get lighter as it comes out from the middle. The, 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 the middle should be the most intense. And also in this painting, we're going to have some water. So I want to decide where the horizon is. And from there, I'll, I'm going to basically mirror the colors. It, it doesn't have to be exact, but you know, when you see colors reflecting into the water, you, it, it usually looks kind of like a beer. All right, I'm gonna get a little bit more of that yellow. Start back in the middle again. If you ever have to add more color, you always wanna go back to the part that's supposed to be the brightest. And if you'll notice, I'm, I'm applying this yellow in egg-shaped strokes, just down, 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 just like that. Down to the right, down to the left. Uh, only I'm doing it much faster. It just helps to blend the color evenly. If you just brush it on, you're gonna have like brush strokes like that. And that, that's not always bad, especially down in the water. You usually want to put vertical lines it helps it make, look, make it look more like water. Of course, if you're, if you're gonna do that, you wanna be careful to, to not make your lines go to the side or look like your water's gonna run out on the floor off the side of the painting, and we don't want that. Basically straight lines. All right, next I'm gonna take a little bit of a lizard and crimson. Now, I'm, I'm not even washing the brush. I'm just putting a little of it on the brush mixed with the yellow. I'll make a slightly orangish color. And we're gonna just put some of that on the outsides where we don't have the, the yellow. And we don't, we don't wanna come too far into our yellow with this. We'll, we'll blend it all together in a second. Right now we're just getting this color on the canvas. The liquid white allows us to move it around after we've applied it. That's one of the things that makes this style of painting so fun. It doesn't take much work. It's just a very free method of painting. You just do whatever makes you happy. And you know, when you see us do something on the show, you, do, you don't necessarily have to do that. This is just a guide. You can use 
whatever tools you want, whatever techniques you want to get the job done. And as you can see, I got some more of the yellow mixed in when I went up there, and, and that's okay. We want this, we're going to end up blending this all together in the end. Just uh, scrub a little bit of red in there. And as I said earlier, we're basically trying to mirror what we see at the top, so I've decided that my horizon is going to be right about here. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some red in down here. The orange. I didn't even have to put that orange in, it just happened naturally. Red mixing with the yellow. Red and yellow make orange. Alright, and while we still got red on the brush, I'm going to mix a very, very small amount of blue in with it. And that's going to make sort of a lavender color with a little bit more of the crimson. And just at the edges, maybe brush in a little crim crimson mixed with the blue. Brush in a little lavender. And maybe down here, there's a little bit more because down here, I said my horizon was going to be about here. So there's a little bit more of the sky that you can see in the water that you can't see in the painting. As I said earlier, when you're you're doing strokes in the water, you can come straight ac across. But first, we need to blend these out. So we continue doing the egg strokes, and we'll come back and go across. You know, if, if you ever have any questions for us about one of our paintings or anything really, you can always go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Salem Painter. And I try to answer every question that I get. If, if you send me a question, I haven't responded to it. I just probably didn't see it or forgot, so remind me. You can also go on our YouTube channel where we post each episode after they're completed. You can actually see them on the YouTube channel before you can see them on television because right now we're on a two-week schedule, so they play the same episode eight times, so everyone gets a chance to see it. All right, now I'm going to wash out my brush because I don't want to get this lavender and, and blue into my yellow or else my sky is just going to turn bright green. And nobody wants that, do they? What I'm doing here is I just dip the, the brush in a paint thinner can. At the bottom of the can, I have a screen, and that lets me scrub most of the paint off. And then I have a trash can with a broom handle through it. And when I beat the brush on the broom handle, all the, the paint just flies right off because of the paint thinner. It's a very easy way to clean the brush. I used to have the hardest time because I was sitting there trying to wipe it all off with napkins and that just won't work. You gotta just beat the brush to death. All right, now that we got that done, we're gonna come back in the middle and start blending this out. I'm gonna hold on to the canvas here so I don't knock it off the easel. But we'll start from the inside and just blend outward until we don't have brush strokes, we don't see lines. But we want to be careful not to go back into the blue before we're done blending the yellow. Nah, I don't know. You don't have to be too careful about it. You can, you can do what you like. Sometimes little streaks through the sky make nice sunsets. You can make the sun green if you like. It's however you want to do it. 
Maybe I should try one where the sun is green. No, I got some very exciting news in the past couple of weeks that I wanted to share with you all. The Salem Painter now has a sponsor who will be providing materials. We are sponsored by Dick Blick Art Materials, and it's great for me because they're also the cheapest place to find materials. You know, I looked all around, and the best place for, for canvas paints, things like that, is there. So it, it works out perfect for me. Uh, they're going to be supplying materials for the show, and in return, I will be doing in-store demonstrations. So I'm very excited about that. Um, the first one is going to be February 11th, which uh, will have already passed by the time the show airs, but for you people on YouTube. Uh, February 11th, I'll be at the... I, I believe the Beaverton store. I'll be at the Beaverton store. There's one in Beaverton and one in Portland. And they have these all across the country, but that, that's our local store. So I'm, I'm going to be there for, for that event, painting live, and I'm really looking forward to that. It's always exciting to, to, to teach people face-to-face, -face and I can answer any questions right then instead of waiting. All right, we've almost got this blended, just a little bit more. Spent a lot of time on the sky, but you know the sky is is my favorite part of the painting, just about always in every painting I do. Even if you know if it's a night scene with northern lights, it's a sunset. The, the only time the sky is kind of boring to me is when it's a bright blue day, and then then I think uh, I enjoy painting the mountains more than doing the sky. And just any place that's too bright, we'll go back and just blend it in because we, we don't want to see brush strokes. We want to see a sky. And come back across and blend it like that. Help remove more of the brush strokes. Maybe we're going to since we're going to have water here, I think we'll get a little bit more of the blue and just come from the outside, go towards the middle with it. This doesn't have to be dark, it's just an indication of water. We're just going to come from the edge of the canvas out. Here in the middle of the painting, we're going to leave a, a little space, and when we blend that all together, it's going to end up looking like a, a sheen of light coming down through here. And I'll show you that in just a second. All right, now that we've got this on here, we'll just come across kind of hard. We don't want to completely cover this up, but cover it up a little bit. Come up a little bit higher. I believe we said our horizon was going to be about here. So we also want to put some blue up there too. Already it's starting to look like the sun's reflecting off the water. And just, just remember to keep these lines kind of straight. You don't have to be perfect. Nothing has to be perfect in this technique. You know, I'm going to tell you a secret. Uh, don't tell anybody, but I can draw. Uh, I can, I'm pretty good at pushing colors around the canvas, but I'm terrible at drawing. You know, a lot of people, they tell me that they can't paint because they can't draw a straight line. I can't draw a straight line either. Anybody can do this. That's what this show is all about. It's, it's not about me painting. It's, it's about me teaching you how to do this. You can do this. Anyone can. All right, I'm going to wash out my brush again. Some people think that's uh, the funnest part of the technique, but I think it's the most annoying. That's why I try to keep several brushes going, but... This brush right here is, is my favorite for blending because it's all natural bristles. 
works best. It's it's actually best to use natural b bristle brushes if you can. Uh, the cheaper brushes can sometimes cut through the paint and cause some problems for you. But uh, natural brushes, they can get a little bit expensive. All right, well, just make sure all the paint thinner is out of that. That's why I'm rubbing it on this paper towel. Because when you're blending, if you have paint thinner on your brush, you can sometimes make a mess out of what you worked so hard to create. And I'm just going to come across and, and blend out brush strokes. Oh, by the way, I will be getting a new easel soon. So you see me here holding this uh, with a good easel. You won't have to do that. And well, I won't have to do that. And and hopefully that'll help out with the show a lot. We're filming two episodes today. I, I normally come in and do a few of them. So uh, we're going to do two episodes today and then the next time we come in we should have the new stuff. And once again, straight lines across the bottom. Start from the outside and go in. Because if you start in the middle here, you're going to make a brush mark and you don't want that. So start at the side when you're doing this. All right, now that we got that out, we got to decide what we're we're doing next. You know, this uh, painting that I'm going to do today, it's uh, based off a painting I saw online. So I'm going to take a little bit of maybe sap green, brown, a little bit of blue, just a very dark color. We can mix it all together here on the brush, on a fan brush. And I'm just going to come along here and Maybe just, just start making some shapes back here that kind of look like trees. Normally when things are very far off in the distance, you want them to be close to the color of the sky. But that's not the case when the sun's going down, so we want these to be very dark. We don't need a lot of detail back here because you can't really see what's going on yet. We're just painting trees way off in the distance. But they, they are going to look darker because they're backlit by the sun. And you know, when we're doing this, maybe we'll take a smaller fan brush. You can use the big one too, or whatever you like. And maybe we'll make some trees back here that are just a little bit more defined, that you see more. Maybe, maybe an evergreen right here. Just come down with the corner of the fan brush. No, not worried about details, just, just getting some trees back here. Indication of trees. Maybe, uh, maybe there's a little bit darker one there, so I'll get a little bit brown, a bit of brown in the brush, and maybe this one's a little bit closer to us, a bit bigger than the others. You know, usually when you see trees, you see like a group of two or three tall trees together, so. I, I try to, I try to kind of do that. But you just put as many trees or as few trees as you feel like. You know, put some little bushes and things in there. And I'm gonna take some of that same dark color and just put more in down here. You know, this is pretty far back in the back and most of it may get covered up. Maybe I'm going to take some of the yellow ochre, put some highlights on them. We don't really want much because these are way off in the distance, so just, just tap in a little bit of color here and there. Maybe, so it looks like some bushes are back here. Maybe the sun hits it a little brighter here, so I'll get some of the, the cat yellow to mix it in. With and a bit more of that. That just brightens it up very little. Just wherever you think the sun might hit more. Maybe there's a little bit 
a little taller bush here. There's one there. Again, we're not we're not seeing much detail. We're just doing some things going on in the background. All right. Now that we got that done, I'm gonna take a little bit of the brown and just make a bank that that comes out just like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a clean, dry brush and just pull some of that paint down to make some reflections. Probably gonna have to come back and add some more brown in here. You just wanna pull these straight down. And maybe a little bit more there. Probably should have done this before I put the bank in. It's gonna work out just fine. All right, and I'm gonna come back and repair my bank I just destroyed. more color there all right now that I've got that done I'm gonna cut off a little bit of the white mix it in with this brown the same color just kind of leave it a little bit marbled and if you've seen the episodes where we do mountains it's gonna be a little bit similar to that we're just gonna barely go across it let the canvas take what it wants we're not pressing here no pressure at all and we're just going to put some highlights up here on the, the rocks and things. And so bank. All right. And I think the last thing we're going to do to this little section is go back and put some of this color from those bushes in the water the yellows things that we had just because we want to make sure those reflect too and we'll come back with our clean dry brush just lightly pull those down just a couple of hairs of the brush we're not we're not really trying to destroy this we just want to make it look look like a watery reflection we'll come across it the same way really lightly really light and here and there if you want you can make it look like there's some ripples by kind of pulling it to the side in certain places and if you find that you got got them pulled down a little too far just blend them into the water it's okay it's not a big deal <clears throat> all right next we're gonna get a little bit of our liquid white and uh, I'm running out, so I gotta get in the bottom of the can here. But we're gonna put a little bit of that down in our palette and just spread it out. It's just a very thin white paint. And right, we're gonna get a little bit on our on just the edge of our knife here. We're just gonna come cut straight across right by the bank. We're gonna make a water line. You wanna keep these straight also. You don't want to make them look like they're going to run out of the painting. Get a little bit more out here on this edge. All right. Okay. I think we're done with that little projection of land. Maybe, uh, maybe we're going to come down and have another one just like it. So I'm going to go ahead and get some more of that same color that I used, the dark underpainting color. Maybe just go ahead and start putting another projection right here. 
and this you could you could almost use any any colors you know blue green brown you just want something really dark this is going to be the underpainting you've got to have dark if you're going to have light this dark is is more important than the pretty colors we're putting on top of it this dark is what is going to make it look like a bush like a tree We have to have something to put those highlights on. And when you're doing this, you can bend your brush up to make some more little details. See, it makes like little grassy looking things. Or you can just press it out in big brush shapes, whatever you feel like doing, it's up to you. It's just, it's gonna make your painting look nice if you have little tiny details in it. <clears throat> All right, again, I'm gonna to mix together some of the green and the Van Dyke Brown. And we're gonna just put it on our fan brush, rub it both ways so you have like just a lot of paint in there and it comes to a sharp point. And we're gonna come up to the canvas. And since we're getting closer, the trees are gonna get bigger and they're gonna to start to get more details in them. Actually, I wanna I wanna put something on this tree back here. I didn't like that tree. So before I come forward, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, now that we got that done, a little bit more paint, get it back to a sharp point. All right, we're going to choose where we want this tree, and we're just going to tap. And I think I want my tree to be right here. Now look at that. It's there now. After we do that, we can't change our minds. we got to paint a tree. If you ever have trouble getting your paint to stick, you want to thin it out a little bit and then it will stick. You'll just use a little paint thinner or a little oil. Whichever you want to use is fine. Oil is probably better to use and works smoother, but paint thinner is a lot easier to deal with. And I'm going to come back and make this a little bit darker, I think. Now that's sun behind it gonna make it look dark and you also want to leave little spaces in your tree where you can see the Sun through it because that's what's gonna make this interesting I think like we were saying earlier if you see a tall tree you usually see another tree or two beside it so I'm gonna put one here and and as you can see I'm just using the fa the corner of the fan brush and I'm coming down you don't have to worry about these shapes too much they'll take care of themselves make these however you like them and again because the Sun is behind it I'm gonna darken it up a little bit all right I think I want to put some more of that color down the ground too that we were using. Maybe extend this down a little bit more. And I'm, I'm going to start tapping in the opposite direction that I tapped for this one for my reflections. And I've decided that the bank is going to end right here. And <clears throat> These are not very important. Again, we're just going to come down on them lightly. Just pull straight down. Straight down. And we're going to come lightly across. Lightly across. This is a uh, one of those situations where the natural bristle brush will work better because as you can see the the nylon bristles will cut the paint a little bit so a natural bristle brush like this will definitely help with blending <clears throat> all right now we're going to do the same thing to this side that we did on the other side but now that we're a little closer we want a little more brighter detail so we're going to start putting in some bushes start with the ones in the back first 
Something important to remember about these is that they are individual bushes. I know sometimes it can look like we're just coming in and smashing in a lot of paint, but if you do that, it's just going to look like a blob. You just want to do each bush individually, each bush separate. And again, if you're having trouble getting the paint to stick, just mix in a little thinner. Right now, it's okay because we're not looking for a lot of detail because this is still quite far away. But as we start coming forward in the painting, we have more layers of paint and we will need paint thinner. And I'm gonna, I'm mixing in a little bit of the yellow with the sap green to make more green colored bushes because since these are in the shadows a little bit, we're, we're not wanting a really bright color. We're just, we just want to show that there are some highlights there, a little bit of light shining. And you see here, we got a little bit of dark area. That, that dark area is good. We want that. We don't want to cover all the dark up. That's what I meant earlier when I said that sometimes the dark is more important than the light. All right, now that we got that done, we're going to reflect some of these into the water. Just a little bit. It doesn't matter. Just kind of kind of mirror them. It does, the color doesn't even have to be exact. Maybe, maybe we want another bush here that's a little bit taller. We'll fl reflect them into the water too. All right. We're going to come back with our, our same brush and just lightly, using a couple of hairs, pull down that color into the reflection. And we're just going to lightly go across. We don't want to destroy this. We just want, want to make it look watery. In fact, uh, I think maybe I'm going to put a little more color in here. Very lightly. Very lightly. I have a couple of brush marks here. I'm going to blend those out. And then you just do that by sweeping back and forth with very light touch. Now really far in the background, we might want to have something else going on. I probably should have done this earlier. Just uh, maybe a little mist or something back there. Yeah, I'll take a clean brush and come along the bottom of that, make it look really far back. Blend it in with the sky a little bit. This is too far away to see any detail at all. I'm going to go ahead and rub it into the tree a little. I can come back and, and put that back in on top of it so it looks more natural. Back with some of the same color on the fan brush. Not a lot of detail at all. This is way back in the distance. And like I said, normally you would want to do this before, but this is a, a good way to, to work on fixing our mistakes. We, when, when I make a mistake, that doesn't mean that I should stop painting. I, I should just go back and change it change it so it looks how I want it to. Maybe turn that into reflections. And make a little water line back here. 
We don't want it as bright as the other water line, but it'll show that we we got some land back here. All right. <clears throat> now that we're done with that, I can come back and fix this tree that I destroyed. So we just come back with the fan brush and do it the same way we made it to start with. And just like that, we've added another island in the background. See how uh, painting gets us the power to create whatever we want. All right. And I think the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take another fan brush. We're gonna get some of the bright yellow color and we're just going to go through this, these trees that are closer and add a few highlights. Nothing very bright. In fact, you'll, you'll barely see them, but when you stand back and look at the painting, it's going to look like, like sun just dancing through the branches here. Just wherever you think the sun would hit. some on the other side here not very much most of this is in the shadow all right I'm gonna do a little more blending down here in the water because I've got these bright bright blue streaks and I don't really want that so blend them out again. Usually when you come forward in the painting you want to try to leave the background alone. There's a good chance a lot of it's going to get covered up anyway. All right next we're gonna take that same dark color except this time I want to add more blue into it. More blue to make it very very dark. This will, this will almost make a black color, maybe even a little bit of the crimson in there. All your colors mixed together. And we're going to make one final land projection out here. And I'm doing this with the big 2 inch brush because if I use that same one I was using, it would take all day to do it. And this is not very important, we're not worried about a lot of details. We're just putting in some, some darker land. Just kind of goes off that direction. Who knows where it goes? We don't care. You could almost just put this on with a paint roller if you wanted to. And we want to go ahead and and highlight these just like we did the others. Start with the ones that are furthest back first. And if, if you're having trouble getting the paint to stick, you can always thin it out using a little paint thinner. Sometimes while you're doing this, your brush is gonna pick up the paint underneath and that is what the paint thinner will prevent because you don't want that. If that does happen, just wash your brush, dry it off, and continue. All right. I think we'll get a little thinner on the brush and run it through the color here. And that's going to make it very thin. We won't have any problems getting this to stick. It'll come right off as soon as we touch the canvas. It'll look very bright. Another way to do this is actually use a little liquid white paint thinner. Well, liquid white medium. If you use a little liquid white, it's also very thin and it will help your color stick. The only thing about liquid white is that because it's white, it's also going to make your colors a little bit lighter than they originally were. Right, 
then we're gonna come back through with some of the yellow and green get some more of that in there and remember these are individual bushes we do want to leave some of that dark area in there we don't want to cover it all up it's different colors maybe maybe we'll put a crimson bush in here purple color maybe there we go right down at the bottom all right now we've done a lot of evergreen paintings so far lots of evergreen trees today we're going to show you how to make some different kind of trees so I'm just gonna take a brush here I'm gonna start at the top of the canvas and I'm just gonna come straight down just mess up everything I just made you get some more paint on there come down again straight down right through everything we just made I know it looks like I didn't mess it up now right but I'll show you while we're doing this in just a second All right, maybe, maybe there's another tree like this right here. More paint. Just want to kind of go off the side a little bit. This one's a little bit thicker. All right, now in these trees, I'm gonna paint some little branches and things coming off of them. So I'll just get a lot of paint on my little thin liner brush. Maybe I'll add a little paint thinner to that paint, make it thinner so it'll run, be easier to paint. And uh, I'm just gonna make a couple little branches hanging off, just here and there. Not a lot of detail, just, and you know, maybe some coming from the middle of the tree, some coming from the back side, maybe, maybe it wraps around a little bit. We'll do the same for the other tree. While you're uh, putting these on, you want to make sure that you twirl your brush <clears throat> so it uh, releases the paint off of it, make it much easier to make these. And when you see tree branches, <clears throat> They normally go off in all different directions, so you don't want to just have one branch hanging down. Unless that's how you like it, and then you can do it however you want to. Some little thin, wispy ones. And I'm going to come back and cover some of these up. All these branches we worked so hard to make. All right. Now, I take a little white paint on my palette knife. And I just want to come around the tree just very lightly, like, like I'm putting on birch bark. Maybe this is a birch tree. Or maybe it's just a highlight. Who knows? When I'm out in nature looking at trees, I'm, I don't think about what kind of tree I'm looking at. I just think about how pretty it is. And we'll come back and put some of these little spaces too, because we don't, we want it to look like bark. We don't want it to look like I dragged a palette knife across the tree. 
smear some of them a little bit more different directions and I'm going to do the same for the other tree let's go right on off the side Kind of like when you take a picture, you know, the picture doesn't just stop there. You know, if something goes off the side, in real life, it kept going. And so you have to remember that with painting too. You don't want, you don't want to, to stop something just because, you know, you think that maybe it should uh, fit on your canvas. No, just let it run on off. It's okay. All right, and on the other side, I'm going to take a little bit of the blue and mix it in with the white. Same thing, not too much. Very little blue because the blue is very strong. And we're gonna come back on the other side with this mixture. Just put some, some blue highlights that kinda look like reflected light. bit more if they start getting to where you can't see them very well go back and pick up some more paint from the palette I'm going to do the same for the other one it's very quick maybe if there's a few places where where it shows through over here the middle part we're not putting any on because you wouldn't see that reflected light on that side of that tree all right, and we're going to go into some green, brown, and make some some thick branches here. Just We're just going to tap, just tap various places up near the top, maybe around the middle. And we want to leave a little space so you can see light through these. We don't want to, we don't want to cover all these branches up. We don't want to cover all the sky up. And I'm going to come back and get some of that lavender mixed with the yellow and make some really light highlights to put on it. And each of these we're going to highlight and it's going to get darker as we come down. I think I'll use a one inch brush for this. And we'll start out and each of these branches are individual just like the bushes. So as we come down painting them they're going to get darker automatically. We don't have to work hard doing this. We'll let the paint work for us. Maybe you got a few that hang out above the dark area that you can see more light through. You know, when I first started doing this tree, I wasn't very happy with it. But now that I'm seeing it all come together, I'm starting to like it more. You know, a lot of times I'll see people paint and they'll do all the background, have a really nice background, but they're afraid to come forward in the picture. And you shouldn't be afraid to come forward, finish the picture. If nothing else, even if you destroy it, you've got practice making it and the next time you'll get better. I've gotten better every time. This is my 34th painting that we're doing today. So as you can see, anyone can do this. If I can do it, you can. <clears throat> now if you ever have any questions about this technique, feel free to ask me and I'll, I'll help you in any way I can. Uh, if I can answer your question, I'm sure I can find somebody that can, and uh, we'll do that for you. So, you know, just drop me a line. You can get us on our YouTube channel, 
you can get us on our Facebook or you can email me at thesalempainter at gmail.com alright now that I'm done with that I realized that I didn't put a bank back here and, and that's very important we need something for all these trees to sit on I think maybe some land would be a good thing for trees to sit on what do you think And I'm going to come back and get some more of that brown, mix it in with the white. And you know, since we already have that blue color here, might as well get some blue in there. Why not? Just put a little highlights on the land, wherever you think light might hit. I mean, I know the sun's back here, but you still have light stuff coming from the sky. All right. I'm going to wipe my, my palette knife off. And to do that, I just keep paper towels. Uh, you can't always see them on camera, but I usually clean all my brushes off with paper towels before I wash them and after. I'm going to put a little water line here. I want to make sure these lines stay basically straight. And, you know, if, if you feel like... Uh, like the water line is too bright, you can always take the knife and just go back over it with no paint and it'll come right off your canvas. It'll just go away and not to worry about it anymore. Um, another thing you can do is maybe put little ripples in the water, things like that. Little logs. See there's a couple little places back here. more white on there just kind of make it look like the water's coming through here and uh if you ever don't like something, like if you, if you don't like the lines after you put them in, just rub them in. I like this, but I want to make it look a little more, more watery. It shows up kind of dark. It gives the indication of the horizon way off in the distance. You mess up those reflections though. Take a step back and see what we got. See, I'm going to do a little more blending here. All right, now I think we're going to call that a finished painting. So there's one more thing I'm going to do because people keep asking me to do this. I'm going to put a signature on my painting. I'm going to do that by just getting some liquid white, putting it down the palette and turning my brush in it. This is a number two script liner brush. You want to get it very wet, maybe maybe even add some thinner to that because you want this to be almost the consistency of ink. All right, and I'm going to put a signature right here in the corner. R and a W. All right, well, I'm glad you could join us today, and and hopefully you'll stay tuned for the next episode. We've, we've got something really fun that we haven't done before that I think you're going to like. Well, we'll see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>